I was delighted to see so many migrant shorebirds going through my area this spring. On one of the days, I saw these long-billed dowagers feeding along the shore. I posted a picture of them to the community page of this channel, but it wasn't until after doing so and staring at that picture that I noticed that the tip of the bird's bill was slightly agape. Not the whole thing, just the very end part. What was going on there, and how was that possible? What I observed is known as distal rhynchokinesis. Rhynco is Greek for beak, and kinesis is Greek for movement. Distal refers to the area farther away from the origin, in this case, the end portion of the bill. Simply put, distal rhynchokinesis is a bird's ability to independently flex the tip of its upper bill with respect to the cranium. There are different types of rhynchokinesis, but I will be referring only to the distal variety in this video. You may observe beak bending in two ways. Either the bird's bill is mostly closed except for the tip, or the whole bill is open and the tip is flexed to some degree. Sometimes the bill flexion is subtle and it can be hard to tell if it's doing rhynchokinesis or just opening its bill. What can be helpful is to look and see if the top and bottom are a match to each other. If they're not, there's some amount of flexion and you know it's rhynchokinesis at work. The majority of the research has been done on shorebirds of the family Scolopacidae, such as godwits, curlews, sandpipers, dunlins, and snipes. It has also been observed in hummingbirds. Though one thing I want to mention is in all the images of hummingbirds I looked at, it looks like it's the lower mandible that's flexing, not the upper. So this may belong to one of the other categories of bill flexibility. This idea of bendy beaks might seem a little strange. After all, bird beaks appear to be hard and rigid structures. But when we take a look at it from the perspective of the bird's diet, the flexibility aspect starts to make more sense. Bird beaks are made up of bone. The outside is covered with a keratin sheath. That's the same protein that makes up our hair and fingernails. Many shorebirds use their bills to probe into soft mud and wet sand in order to find prey. The tips of their bills are also full of sensory receptors called Herbst corpuscles. Since they can't see their food, they rely on their sense of touch to feel it. My guess is that this functions similarly in hummingbirds. Many times they're inserting their bills into long, tubular flowers, going partly by their sense of touch to locate nectar. So, how does it work? The short answer is this. Shorebirds are able to move the upper tip of the bill due to regions of thinner bone called bending zones, or hinges. In this case, Hinge doesn't mean the connection of two bones to form a joint like the knee, but thinner areas of bone that can flex. Think of how the sole of a running shoe flexes. The toe of the shoe is thinner and can bend easily, whereas the arch and the heel are rigid. Now for the nitty gritty. Bear with me here. The letters on the image represent the bending zones or hinges and the lines in between the letters are rods that push on those hinges, causing flexion. It starts at E. When that movement happens, it flexes at A, and the bottom portion of the beak, E to D, pushes forward and flexes at C, which causes the lifting of the distal beak. Why have this feature? It's largely due to efficiency. Having a flexible bill allows them to grasp slippery prey when it's buried in mud and soggy sand. Kind of like a pair of forceps or tweezers with a bent tip. It's also more efficient to open the tip of the bill than the entire length. This makes a lot of sense, especially in birds with very long bills. But you may be wondering, obviously in 100% of the images shown in this video, the bill is shown flexed when they're not foraging for food. 
I'm speculating here, but it seems like they flex the bill tip when they're standing still, or preening, or generally in a more relaxed state. I wonder if it's akin to stretching and moving to get the body more comfortable. Have you been lucky enough to see rhynchokinesis in action? Or did you notice it after you looked at your photos as I did? If so, feel free to share what bird it was and when you noticed it. Thank you for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.